Okay. So, hi everyone. Um, welcome to the 13th session of the Med AI Group Exchange sessions. This week we have Rikia Yamashita from the Rubin Lab joining here today, and he's going to be talking about his research on style transfer augmentations for computational pathology. Um, Rikia is a radiologist turned applied scientist, uh, applied research scientist, and he's a postdoc. Um, at the Department of Biomedical Data Science here at Stanford and uh, works very closely with the Rubin Lab. And he's broadly interested in developing methods for uh, machine learning in unstructured biomedical data as well as for clinical medicine. So thanks so much, Rikia, for joining us today. And uh, before we actually get started, do you have any preferences on how you'd like us to ask questions? Would you like us to interrupt you when we have them or at the end? Oh yeah, please, please like in, interrupt me like any time I mean, during the, uh, the presentation. Awesome, okay. So let's try to make this session as interactive as po possible. And with that, um, I'll, I'll hand it over to Rikia. Thanks, thanks Nanita for introduction. Um, um, yeah, so um, my, name is, my name is Rikia. Um, and I'm a postdoc in Rubin Lab. Um, yeah, as as Nandita introduced, uh, Nandita's introduction, I'm a, a like ex former radiologist turned like a, a machine learning researcher. Um, that I believe, <laughs> um, and then I'm inter interested in like extracting knowledge from unstructured data like images and text, and and to to that helps disease diagnosis and patient risk stratification, and outcome prediction, and so on. So. Um, so today, um, I'm going to talk about my, one of my research projects, uh, learning domain agnostic visual representation for computational pathology using medically relevant style trans transfer augmentation. Um, so the topic is like a computational pathology. Um, so, so there are like a, a few terms that I, I'd like to introduce first. Um, the digital pathology is the, the process of like digitization of the, the traditional diagnosis process of like analyzing cells and tissues with a microscope scope uh, performed by a like pathologist uh, via ho um, whole slide scanners and compu computer screens. And the whole slide images are the digitized uh, version of the images obtained by like a, a, a high resolution scanners. Um, uh, that um, scans the whole entire uh, histopathological glass slice uh, on the, the resolution of like a microscope. <clears throat> and the computational pathology is a computational analysis of those like digitized uh, whole set images um, and uh, automatically analyze those uh, cells and tissues on like a really high resolution images. So the, the, the traditional workflow was uh, so there's a, if there's a patient uh, who with a cancer, and the surgeons extract these cancer uh, the cancer from their body, and the surgeon uh, send uh, those tissue specimens to a like a department of pathology, and those tissues are fixed and and stained, and the pathologists uh, uh, will like examine those like uh, slides on a microscope and make a diagnosis or evaluate treatment response. But nowadays, like there's a, like, a scanner and we can acquire uh, the whole set of images um, on the magnification of, like, on the microscope magnification level. So these whole set of images are super big uh, gigapixel size. Uh, that's kind of like a unique characteristics of the computational pathology. And so, the, so we usually like scan these slides uh, at the, like a, a 40x magnification level. Uh, so if you have like this slide, uh, glass slide, the, the resulting whole set images are like, are like 100,000 pixels by 60,000 pixels or sometimes even more. Um, this is uh, one of the, the challenge uh, for computational pathology. But today I'm gonna to focus on like another challenge in computational pathology, <clears throat> and that's uh, domain shift and batch effects. And so, uh, so through the process of like staining, scanning, um, the 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 resulting 
um, Holosat images look uh, really different among institutions or like scanners or who, who uh, perform the, the staining or like staining protocols across the institution, something like that. So, uh, so there's a like data set uh, uh, called like Chameleon 17 wilds. I'm gonna talk this data set uh, more uh, later. Uh, but this data set uh, stems from the, the images from five different hospitals. And so these uh, images from the hospitals one, two, and three look a little bit similar, right? But for the hospital, the data images from hospital four and five look totally different. So if you train your model on these like uh, uh, reddish uh, images, your model uh, sometimes doesn't uh, generalize well to these like more bluish or like published images. Uh, that's a, like a, a huge problem in uh, the computational pathology. Um, so um, uh, earlier last this year, we published a paper. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, we published. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. We published a paper in Lancet Oncology um, uh, in the field of uh, computational pathology. So what we did was to, we tried to uh, classify the colorectal cancers into two different genetic subtypes using uh, like deep learning. Uh, so these two, they are like two different distinct types of like colorectal cancers. One is called MSI, the other is called MSS. The MSI is more like rare, and that has like a better uh, stage adjusted prognosis. Um, the standard chemotherapy is not, that doesn't work well on these MSI cancers. And instead the immune checkpoint in inhibitors works better on these MSI cancers. So it's really important to classify these two uh, colorectal cancers. Uh, uh, I'm gonna skip, up, skip the details about how we train the model uh, or something like that. But we trained our model using deep learning and we tested the model on a like TCGA, like external data set uh, from TCGA. And the data set uh, stems from like derived from 18 uh, medical uh, different institutions. So the red line um, shows the overall performance, but actually this like TCGA data set uh, consists of like a uh, both 40x and 20x magnification holoset images. Um, and then if we evaluate our model performance on, only on the 40x uh, slides that are represented here in blue, uh, it worked better. And if we, if we only if we, uh, evaluate our model performance on 20x, it, it was really bad actually. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, then um, we performed like we extracted the color uh, color features from the whole images, and we uh, applied like dimensionality reduction, and we plotted in this like a uh, uh, two dimensional space, and we applied um, clustering. Like uh, at, at this time, we used DV scan. Um, so there were like two discrete, like perfectly like split, like uh, separated two groups of the the slides. And if we code these points with the, the magnification level, uh, these yellow are the 20X slides and these purple are the, pop, the, the 40X slides. And more interestingly, like, uh, as I said, like this TCG data set stems from 18 institutions. Uh, all, all of those like 20X slides came from uh, like only one single institution. And these purple dots are, uh, are uh, they came from, the, the rest 17 institutions. So, um, and, but more like a more easy, <laughs> it's more simple. If we actually take a look at these like images, uh, they look totally different. So the, the, the 20 X uh, slides from the institution, institution eight look really published bluish and the, the 40 X slides from the other institutions are more uh, um, reddish pinkish. <laughs> Um, so there was a paper recently published um, where the, the authors studied the, the batch effect in computational pathology. They collected uh, 
uh, the whole set of images from five different institutions. And these two are actually from the same institutions. Uh, the, and the A, B, C, D, E are acquired at a different institution. And A, C, D, uh, and E were acquired with the uh, Zeiss scanner. And this B and F are, B was acquired by like a, some different scanner, like a, uh, the scanner from a different vendor. And F was acquired by like a Hammer Max scanner. Um, so they looked totally different and they came from different institu institutions. And what they did was to train a like a ResNet 50 model to predict like a, a, the scanner type or like a, the, the slide origin, like the institution. And it worked really like almost perfect. So there's the CNNs are, CNNs, like deep learning models are really easily, uh, super easy to, to um, identify the, the originating institution and also like scanner types. And also like uh, the, 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 the Resident 50 model also was able to, um, um, like a predict patient age from the slides. Um, so there's another paper did the similar analysis, but uh, they performed a little bit more like in-depth analysis um, on the batch effect on deep learning models. So uh, they uh, they actually collected the the breast cancer um, host like images uh, from TCGA. And they, like similar to our approach, they extracted the uh, first order statistics, like first order features. And they also extracted second order, uh, like uh, heraldic uh, texture features from the hosted images. And these, each column uh, represent like a different institution. And the, the, these are like features extracted from the R and these are um, red and green and so uh, blue. So as you can see, like these like uh, feature uh, values vary a lot. And also the, the, the second order texture features are uh, varies a lot. And there are already like a, a kind of like a, a standardized approach to mitigate this challenge. One is uh, staying normalization. The other is staying augmentation. The stain normalization uh, refers to like the, the to like change the changes in color characteristics to uh, reduce the effect of like stain stain differences between slides, um, or, or, uh, and then the, the the stain color augmentation refers refers to the random variations applied to individual tiles or like images. Um, uh, so that to, to induce more like variations uh, when the, the training deep learning models. So um, what they did was, um, so, so the, the, the Y axis stands for like uh, the, the features. These are like uh, these, uh, the first order statistics like uh, features and the, these bottom features are the texture features. And, and each cell, uh, stands for the F, uh, F statistics. So if the the color color is darker, uh, there it says like it's there's more like variation in slides. <clears throat> so uh, so if you uh, uh, evaluate these um, F statistics on the original images, uh, uh, you see like most of the cells are dark. Um, so meaning like uh, there's a, there are a lot of variations in those like original slides. And oh, so these Masenko, like Reinhardt grayscale, or like, these are the method, methods for the stain normalization. And after applying stain normalization, like some first order statistical like, features uh, are getting better. They are getting more like uniform, uh, but for, the most of the texture features, uh, we didn't see any like uh, effect on the stain normalization on the second order uh, texture statistics, te texture features. Um, um, quick question, Rikia. Yeah. What does ASM stand for in the second order features? I see that that's uniformly uh, dark. Um, it's an asymmetry. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, asymmetry. Uh, 
Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry, uh, it's no asymmetry yeah. something. <laughs> sorry, I see, I see. Okay, but it's a uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's really bad, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, uh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, I will uh, let no you worries. know like later. I can share. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. So um. So uh, then, like, uh, let's uh, move into like the the paper that uh we uh, I'm gonna present today. Um. So like as we like uh, as we we've seen. Like the motivation for this study is the domain shift. Uh, in this study, like uh, in this presentation, in this work, uh, I use the term domain. Uh, uh, domain refers to like a scanners, stain, pro uh, like scan protocols, vendor differences, or uh, the medical sites institutions. And uh, as we've seen, uh, these like color or like texture informations on the slides are are largely like domain specific. Um, so um, there has been like a lot of like, a, so the similar um, phenomenon, phenomenon has been like a, um, observed by in, in different like um, domains, like a, a field, like a natural imaging or like a lot of different fields. And there has been like a lot of work has been done. Uh, the, the one of the related work is domain adaptation. Uh, domain adaptation loans uh, to align feature distributions of like source and target domains in a, a domain invari invariant feature space. Uh, but the domain adaptation typically requires access to like a few, at least a few data samples from the target domain uh, when you are training a model. So that's, uh, uh, that's domain adaptation. And the domain general, generalization would be the, the another one. Uh, it aims to adapt uh, adapt from uh, from multiple la multiple label source domains to an unseen target domain uh, without needing to access data samples from the target domain. That's great, but like it, it typically um, assumes that the da target data are homo homo homogeneously uh, sampled from the same distribution. Um, uh, these are like all great approaches. Um, there's a lot of like advancement in these um, uh, techniques, but like uh, what I have in what I had in my mind was like the pathologist or like I'm a radiologist, but like the physicians are usually uh, generally like really robust to domain shift, and I think humans can learn class specific features rather than domain specific features, uh, and they generalize well. For example, like uh, the the pathologist. Uh, who trained? Who was trained in institution A, and if they move to, if he or she moves to institution B, is she she performs really well. You know what I mean? So, um, so I like to uh, have like a machine deep learning model to like mimic those like a uh, generalizability uh, by like integrating like some by integrating some insp inspiration of like how human human expert learn. Or like interpret these images. Um, so um, so yeah. Um, so the the task I I I I I, um, I tried in this study was like a domain agnostic learning, or also it's called dom a single domain generalization. It's more challenging but more like practical problem. Um, it learns the the knowledge from the one source domain. And generalize that to a multi, not multiple target domains. So the model, uh, we train the model on a like single um, source data set, single institution data set, and generalize it to like a multi, unseen multi uh, institution data set. And, and the, the solution to this domain agnostic learning, like a single domain generalization, uh, should learn domain domain invariant and a class specific visual representations as as we do. And um, uh, this project, like this um, project, was like largely inspired by the, 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 this paper, uh, this paper uh, called like a, the ImageNet trained scenes are biased towards texture, and the increasing shape bias improves uh, the generalizability. Um, so, so they said like it's they they say uh, the CNNs are biased towards texture, and so um, a cat with an like elephant texture is an elephant to 
the CNN models, image that pre-trained CNN models. And, but it looks, looks still a cat to humans. So humans are more reliant on the global shape features, but the, the CNNs are more reliant on the textures. And they presented that uh, the texture bias in those like CNNs can be uh, changed um, towards a shape bias if the models are trained on the stylized version of the ImageNet. <clears throat> um, so, uh, so the, the, the brief recap of this, the, the style transfer is, the style transfer is like a CNN based image transformation algorithm that manipulates the, the low level texture representation of an image uh, called style uh, while uh, preserving its like semantic content. Um, they use like gram metrics, uh, mat mat matrices uh, or like some other like similar second order statistics of the activations of different layers of a CNN, CNN to, to represent the style of an image. So the, the, my hypothesis was the, the pathologists are biased toward shape rather than texture or color. And that's why they generalize well across domains. And the low level texture content, low level texture um, uh, or like color content of the, the image tend to be more like domain specific, uh, leading to suboptimal um, performance of the CNN models uh, on domain shifted unseen data. Whereas the high high level semantic content uh, or like shape, uh, global shape, uh, is more domain invariant uh, from which uh, ubiquitous like class specific visual representations can be learned. <clears throat> Um, so we proposed a, uh, a method approach called STRAP, uh, Stride Transfer Augmentation for His Pathology. Uh, by applying style transfer, style transfer, we uh, split this like a uh, his pathology image into two components. One is content, the other is style. And we uh, extract the style from these uh, un, like a random non-medical image images like um, artistic paintings and we swap the, the style and generated like these stylized version of the history pathology images. And uh, my hypothesis is this content is more like class specific and domain invariant. So the model can learn the class specific and domain invariant representations. And then um, hopefully those models generalize better. <laughs> Um, so we um, tested this approach on two different specific tasks. One is the, the genetic subtype classification that um, I introduced in an earlier uh, uh, slide. And that this task is a, a single domain generalization task. So the model was trained on a single domain like institution data set and tested on a like TCGA data set actually, uh, the, that um, stems from uh, 18 institutions. And the second task was the tumor identification. Uh, this is a, like a more typical domain generaliza generalization task. Um, uh, it's a multi-source domain generalization, uh, meaning the models are trained on a multi-source domain data set, like mod and, and then tested on a single domain data set. So we've seen this slide before, so I'm gonna skip this, but like uh, the first task was to, to classify the genetic subtypes of their colorectal cancer. And we used a, like a, uh, we used a, the, the artistic paintings from a the Kaggle, comp Kaggle competition called Painter by Numbers. And we generated these like stylized images. Um, as a baseline, we um, compared this trap against uh, the stain normalization and the stain augmentation. Uh, these are the, the, the sample, like sample images uh, obtained by the stain augmentation. Um, so, so this column is the, the, the results for the, these columns are like results for the single domain generalization. So we trained our model on 
a mix down for data set and tested that on this. This is the TCGA data set. And as you can see, like the, this drop uh, performed much, much higher than the, the stain augmentation or stain normalization. And these two are uh, the state of the art uh, results. And uh, these two both apply stain normalization. So, so the, the below three approaches can be considered as a, like a stain normalization approaches. Um, so, so these three actually are like close to like 0 0.78, uh, 75, 75 ish, or and then like stain augmentation performed like 0 0.81, but the strap performed like much higher. And oh yeah, and also like I also did like a tested the model performance on like an in, in domain in distribution situation setting. And still like, uh, I mean, like meaning that, that we trained on the TCGA data set and tested the model performance model performance on the TCGA data set. Uh, so they, these two data sets stems from the same uh, multi institution data set. And still like- Sorry, Nikia, sorry, I have just one quick question. So sure. for, for the training also, um, the, your step <clears throat> like style model also for training, you actually augmented each of the sample images using yeah, multiple yeah. styles, right? Yeah, no, it's actually like, so yeah, each time I apply like one style. Oh, only one style? Did you randomly yeah. select the style or? Yeah, you... we land, uh, yeah, I randomly selected the style each time. Ah, yeah. So for each each day, each sample, I, sorry, I'm, I'm probably repeating my question. I just want to understand. So for each mm -hmm. sample, actually, you are randomly picking one style for your yeah. training. And for yeah. your validation also you're doing the same or for validation? No, no. So the the the, the inference time I, I tested the model performance on the original test pathology images. Oh, okay. so, so okay. and so 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 meaning that the this the strap uh so the for these approaches, strap and is the stain augmentation, stain normalization, they all of those models are trained on the same number of the images. Okay, uh, you know what but I mean? Like, just I like for step, you are using like different style every time when you start like training right yeah and for every epoch you are using same style with the same images or also um, with for, epochs you are changing the style um so it's actually a little bit computationally expensive to apply this style transfer so okay. i i actually like use the same um oh, styles okay. throughout the the uh, throughout the, the epochs but i mean ideally the the different styles should be applied to the different epochs right um, right. I would imagine yeah. like that would be like more robust performance. Of exactly. The training, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But that was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need to like uh, uh, make this like a style transfer um, more like a computationally efficient so that mm, it can okay. be applied as like a on, the, on the fly data augmentation. Mm. But at this time, we we did actually like offline augmentation first and then apply that uh, during the model training. Okay. Makes sense. Um, yeah, so we also like uh, um, assess the, the effect of like differences in style source. The first uh, experiment we, uh, we used artistic paintings uh, for this, uh, this uh, 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 experiment. We also like uh, uh, applied same style transfer using like natural images. These images are came from the, this, the image net and we also like generated the, the similar uh, stylized version of the his pathology images. Uh, we also uh, created like a, uh, so I mean, I'm sorry. So I, we call these, sorry, the, 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 these images, the approaches are like medically irrelevant style transfer, uh, meaning like the, the, the style images are, are completely different from the medical Im imaging. Uh, we also like uh, uh, created a, like a, a medically relevant stylized version of images. For this experiment, we, took the, the different, like uh, another histopathology imaging data set and we uh, all, like uh, uh, st stylized uh, those like original uh, content histopathology images uh, with these like different uh, uh, histopathology images, histopathology images as a style, style source. Um, so uh, when we use like artistic paintings or like natural imaging, like medically, irrelevant style transfer, uh, the model performed higher than the medically relevant style transfer. Um, the medically relevant style transfer here actually doesn't have like a lot of like uh, color variations. 
Um, so maybe that's a, one of the reasons that didn't. Frozen. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so so if we compare the the model performance, uh, the the artistic painting and natural imaging performance against the medically relevant strap, uh, the the artistic painting actually uh, presented like a, a significant uh, p value, uh, but like uh, natural imaging also like uh, um, showed like a 0 0.088 uh, p value. Um, so yeah, uh, it it wasn't like a statistically significant, but I mean I see some like I, I think we can we can we see some trend uh, different of uh, the like differences in the medically relevant and medically relevant style strap. Um, uh, when we apply style transfer, there's a, like a hyperparameter called stylization stylization coefficient. Uh, it like uh, controls how how much you change the image. Um, like style. So if you use like a, a lower value of the, the, the stylization co coefficient alpha, uh, it looks similar to the original images. And if you have like more larger um, alpha, it's more like strongly stylized. So um, I applied like three different stylization coefficients, uh, one and 0 0.8, 0 0.6. And it, we, we, when we use like larger um, coefficient, uh, the model performance was, was higher. Um, we also like, um, so as, as Iman asked, we also like uh, created uh, like a test, test like inference data set. Uh, I'm sorry, the stylized version of the, the, the testing data set. So, so this column stands for the model performance on the original um, slides. But uh, for this column, the test data set was also stylized using like a, a natural imaging at like ImageNet images. And we tested the, the strap performance uh, for the artistic paintings and the histopathology images. And also like we evaluated the performance on style, style uh, stain augmentation and normalization. So, so the, the strap, the medically relevant strap, irrelevant strap uh, actually performed really much, much higher uh, than these like other other approaches, and so the performance decrease was 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 smaller for the strap using like artistic paintings. Um, uh, there's another paper uh, investigated a similar topic but with a, like a different angle. Uh, what they did was like they decomposed their like images into low and high frequencies uh, using. Uh, Fast Fourier transformation. So uh, this is like a this is an image. Uh, uh, this is like a frog actually. And uh, if you feed this in, if you run like CNN model, image that CNN model on this image, it says it's frog. But if you decompose these images, this image into two uh, low and high frequency components, uh, actually the model says it's frog on the high frequency components that are really hard to perceive from the, from, by, by human beings. And if you run the model on this low, low frequency components, it says something else. Um, so uh, I was interested in like how strap actually um, low frequency component rather than high frequency component and see how like strap models are similar to the, the way we, we perceive images. So, so I, I decomposed this like a, a his fossil images into, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, into like low and high frequency component using fast Fourier transformation. And I applied like low pass filter and like di different sizes of the low pass filters and, and the, uh, assess the model performance on this low frequency components. So if you like to increase the size of the, the low pass filter, uh, the the strap model actually strap actually uh, reaches its peak uh, with like a with a smaller low pass filters, uh, and the the stain augmentation normalization reaches their peaks uh, at like a, with a larger uh, the the low pass filter size. So meaning that the strap actually exploit more of the lower uh, frequency components, 
And probably this is one of the reasons why uh, the strap worked uh, generalized better. We also like uh, 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 generated like the saliency maps using integrated gradient attribution. And the strap actually, the, 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 the saliency maps for strap are more, so the, 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 the saliency maps for this, this style of stain augmentation normalizations are more like the attributions are diffusely distributed, but for the, the strap, it's more like a, a localized and, and they are actually like corresponding to uh, like the, t the lymph sites in the cancer or like mitosis. Um, those are um, the, the histomorphological like features that are known to be associated with the, the genetic subtypes. Uh, and so moving to the, the specific task two, uh, tumor identification. Uh, we used, for this specific task, we used Chameleon 17 wild data set. So this data set has like a, a 455,000 patches, image patches extracted from 50 wholesale images of breast cancer metastasis in lymph node sections. And uh, each of the, each like 10 wholesale images are, <clears throat> are, are acquired from like a, a different hospitals. And the task was to predict, uh, so the image size was is uh, 96 by 96 pixels. And the task was to, to predict if the central 32 by 32 region contains any uh, cancer tissue or not. So this is actually the, the Chameleon 17 wild data set. And we trained our model on these uh, images from the three institutions, hospitals, and we tested the model performance on this um, or out of distribution test set um, came from the hospital five. So again, the, the, the medically ir irrelevant stra strap uh, performed better than the other adults. And so uh, because the, the number of the image patches are so large, the, the P values are like all uh, super low. Uh, I mean, uh, this doesn't make any, I mean, this doesn't necessarily meaning means like the strap with like artistic paintings are much better than the strap with na natural images. Uh, the, the actual difference are like really small, but I mean, uh, but for like uh, the strap, medically irrelevant strap, we had like a 0.98, 0 0.97 AURC, but for the other approaches, the, the AURC were like uh, around like 0.9, or like for a stain normalization, it was like 0.85. So I think this, so, uh, these two are better than the other three. Um, so um, so we, we introduced strap, uh, like start, a, a form of like a data augmentation based on like random start transfer with medically relevant style sources. Uh, for uh, learning domain agnostic visual representations in computational pathology. And uh, we demonstrated that our approach yields like significant improvement in model performance on uh, in computational pathology tasks, uh, particularly when there's like a, a, a in, in the presence of domain shifts. And medically relevant strap uh, can be a, like a, so that can be a practical tool and possible solution for uh, the domain agnostic learning, and um, hopefully, like our approach uh, can like um, help like mitigate the, the the domain shift problem in computational pathology. So the future, as the future works, what we have in mind or like or uh, already like started working on is uh, for us is to apply this strap to to, to the contrast learning framework. Um, as probably you know, like the the, the contrast learning framework is 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 based on data augmentation. Uh, so you have to augment, like you have to create two different views views of this X first, and then you contrast the, the representation from these two different views of the images, right? Um, so so the the strap probably can be applied to this first step of the contrast learning. 
and we hope like the 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 self supervised learning models are, are trained using this trap could probably learn like better visual visual representation. We also are, like are interested in like applying this trap to other types of medical imaging. Uh, we uh, we started working on like applying strap to like uh, retinal fundus images, um, and see how we can also like optimize how the 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 strap approach for the different types of medical imaging. Um, um, so, and recently there's a, like another paper came out. Um, and they compare the, the texture versus like a shape bias in CNN and transformers. Uh, which of the CNN or like transformer are more similar to human vision. Um, so yeah, this is the CNN and this is the, the vision transformer. And so this is the results from the paper. Uh, so the y-axis are like a different subclass, subclass for the task, like classification task. And so the fractions of like shape decisions are, are like if, if the, the dots are like located on the left, the, the decision was more like based on shape. And if the, the, the dots, these points are like located on the right side, it's more like texture biased. So, uh, these like uh, orange, yellow and orange triangles are vision transformers. And these like, uh, uh, this like blue dot, blue circle is like red 50. Um, so as you can see, like the, the, the and so, sorry, the, the red diamond is the human. So human beings are really uh, biased towards shapes. And, and as you can see, like transformers are more biased towards shape. Uh, compared to the CNN. So I'm also like interested in applying uh, vision transformers to see um, how we can also like more um, um, learn more about the shape based uh, visual representations from the whole set images and see how those models generalize well or not. Um, yeah, that's it for my presentation. This is a link to the, the preprint. Uh, it's uh, still under review, so it's not uh, formally published yet. Uh, but I mean, hopefully, uh, the paper will be uh, published uh, sometime. So, thanks for uh, listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Rikia. I think that was a very um, like clear presentation, so I understood every step of the way. And um, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask um, right now. Hi. Um, so I have a question about the, um, <clears throat> I guess the style sources. So um, you see, or so in this figure specific, specifically, mm -hmm. I guess, um, you show that you use, you know, random uh, artistic images to uh, introduce that style or the uninformative style. Um, I was wondering if one, if you saw any maybe artistic style that like outperformed other styles Oh, um, like just do yeah. one style per augmentation, mm -hmm. and two, it almost seems like at least with the the far right style, the gray style, that almost seems like um, I think you introduced a little earlier in your presentation about the, uh, I guess the grayscaling of the histopathic images, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if maybe the style transfer of this grayscale art was comparable to the grayscale of the histopath or um, if the actual uh, introduction of the style transfer um, changed the performance at all? Those are like really great questions. And for the first question, like uh, if there's any differences in, among like different genre or like styles of the, 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 the artistic paintings have like different uh, effect on the model performance. We, we are actually working on that right now. So I don't have any answer yet but as far as i've seen uh as far as i examine the the stylized version of the images um i saw some trend um some artistic paintings actually destroy the the shape informations and some different like types of the, the artistic paintings are really like performed well in terms of like uh, preserving 
this shape information. So we are actually working on that. And so uh, hopefully like share some results uh, in the near future. Uh, for the second point, that's also like, that's also like a really good point. And uh, so uh, what I understand is if you just convert your image into grayscale, uh, you did not remove the like a superficial like a texture information from the image, right? It just like a change the color, right? But for the style transfer, we believe that uh, it, it's not just changing the color, it also like um, strip some like superficial texture uh, characteristics uh, from the images. Um, so I think the uh, we even even though we only like apply strap with like this these like black and white artistic painting images, uh, I believe that the strap works better than the gray grayscale um, stain normalization. But that's that's a good <laughs> point, and I'd like to actually perform the experiment and see how they are different. So thanks so much for the suggestion. Yeah, thank you so much for the explanations. Yeah, because I mean, I guess my natural intuition is that if you try to um, use like a Picasso, I feel like that might make the image maybe a little too abstract for the model to learn anything versus mm -hmm. maybe some sort of like photorealistic right. styles. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We're also like interested in like applying different image, different type of images are like as style source or like also like previously Nandita suggested to apply like complete noises at like style source and how see how they perform. So uh, I think it, this is really interesting venue to to investigate more. So yeah, and those are like a really good suggestion. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for the talk. So, so Riki, I have um, one quick question. So I agree with you that this kind of style model, actually, they are not really only changing the color, but they are mm -hmm. probably adding some more structural information in your images, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So have you uh, like even th thought about like computing the structural similarity index between the image to image? Oh, that's a good suggestion. I No, I didn't apply. So there's, a, ma there's yeah. a metric actually. So after deep learning came, we probably forgot the traditional computer vision technique. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a there is a metric called structural similarity index. Okay. Uh huh. Structural similarity. Structural index. similarity okay. index. Yeah. So yeah. you can probably apply those structural similarity index between the. It's similar if you look at like um, natural so, language processing. It's similar like computing uh -huh. cosine similarity, right? Oh, okay. But yeah. What, between, what 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 what. What do you actually compare? Like, uh, yeah, so they are they, actually they, they are not, compare the shape or like more texture. Yeah, they are what, what more. They, yeah, they are more comparing the structure in the image. So, for example, if you have like only pipe, like tabular structure in the image, even if they are in the defined location, probably your structure mm -hmm. similarity index will be very high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you have like, thanks. Yeah, some circle and some tabular, probably the structure mm -hmm. similarity index would be lower if you compare do, the two images. You know. Do you think so that? Be, the, 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 that value is also like affected by the difference in texture or color, or that's really texture, texture, definitely, changing. texture, definitely. Okay. But color, I okay. don't think that that similarity index has too much effect on the color. So I would be really okay. interested in um in in understanding like how different your generated images are from the original histopathology images. You know, after mm -hmm, you apply mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for the suggestion. That's yeah. that's really good to know. And, and another thing, probably you can you can you can check that there are multiple um, image similarity metrics also that are used for content-based image yeah. retrieval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So probably you can also try those because basically what That's you it. want to identify is that the similarity between the images, the semantic yeah. similarity you, between the images. So you mean like the, those like uh, metrics used for like. Uh, um, high, hyper CBI, resolution yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay CBI yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah 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 thanks so much okay sounds great yeah yeah that's a good tradition thank you thank you I have another follow up question Rikia okay. yeah. um so the, the both the tasks that you evaluated on were classification tasks right yeah yeah. Do you think the performance is, is going to be similar if you wanted to use it for, let's say, segmentation, where you actually want to try out um, like identification yeah. of, of some uh, like things in the pathology? Like, would yeah. that ha have you like, tried like, an experiment? 
Um, no, not yet. I mean, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned about that, but that's also like a, a, a like a next step that we have in my, our mind. Oh, okay. Um, um, so I'm really interested in like so if the model is more like if the model can learn more like about <clears throat> shape, I, I guess like so. So the popular task segmentation task in computational pathology is the nuclei segmentation. Mm -hmm. um, and if the 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 stylized image has more like can have like more like this, I'm sorry, the, the strap can introduce more like shape bias to the CNNs. Mm -hmm. I, I believe the, 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 the segmentation task also like works better. So uh, yeah, that's also like we have in our mind, but I mean, I, I have a lot to do, so I, mean, <laughs> I haven't done that yet, but I mean, yeah, uh, that's definitely uh, on, on our like to-do list. So thanks so much for suggesting. Awesome, okay. Yeah. Any other questions, anyone? <laughs> Okay, I guess then um, if, if there are no more questions, then let's thank Rikia with some virtual applause. Um, thanks. Thanks so much, Rikia, for presenting. Great presentation, Rikia. Thank you. Everyone thank you so much. And thanks, thanks for you inviting us. Thank you so much. Thank Definitely. you, everyone. Yeah, Good and night. you can watch the recorded talk uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll be up by tonight. And if you have any other further questions, you can always follow up um, with Rikia or, or put it up on our website or under the YouTube video. So and thank, thanks everyone for the great questions. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you, Ricky. Bye. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. See you all next week. Thank you, Nandita. Thanks.